Hello, and welcome to this Microbiology Bio 203 video lecture from Chapter 19 of your OpenStax book, Diseases of the Immune System. I'm Mr. Kennedy, and I'll be your guide as we explore this topic together. Learning outcomes for Chapter 19 include discussing components, mechanisms, and examples of the four types of hypersensitivity reactions, describing the major organ-specific and systemic autoimmune diseases, describing immunodeficiencies, and discussing cancer immunotherapies. We begin today by looking at a tricky balance within the immune system. The immune system has to strike a delicate balance between attacking non-self and tolerating the self. In addition, the immune response should be of the right magnitude and duration. If the balance is disrupted, or the extent of the response is excessive or inadequate, immune disorders can occur. Here we see, attacking non-self only, the immune system is meant to eradicate and or protect us from pathogens, cancer cells, and foreign cells. Too much tolerance can lead to immunodeficiency, and an excessive response can lead to autoimmune diseases. Hypersensitivity. Hypersensitivity reactions are undesirable adaptive immune responses. Basically, they are an exaggerated immune response to antigens called allergens. They use the same mechanisms as the adaptive immune response, but can be harmful. The table, the bottom right of this slide, summarizes the four types of hypersensitivity. Be sure to pause the video and familiarize yourself with each before moving on. Type 1 hypersensitivity. Type 1 hypersensitivity is a pre-sensitized individual being exposed to an antigen or allergen and the subsequent immediate immune response or allergy that follows. The first exposure involves IgE response and sensitizes the individual to further exposure. This is an illustration or a slide that shows the mechanism of type 1 hypersensitivity. On the first exposure to an allergen in a susceptible individual, the antigen presenting cells process and present the allergen epitopes with major histocompatibility complex, MHC, to two T helper cells. B cells also process and present the same allergen epitope to T helper 2 cells, which release cytokines interleukin-4 and interleukin-13 to stimulate proliferation and differentiation into IgE-secreting plasma cells. The IgE molecules bind to mast cells with their FC region, sensitizing the mast cell for activation with subsequent exposure to the allergen. With each subsequent exposure, the allergen cross-links IgE molecules on the mast cells, activating the mast cells and causing the release of preformed chemical mediators from granules, as well as newly formed chemical mediators that collectively cause the signs and symptoms of type 1 hypersensitivity reactions. This table summarizes the type 1 hypersensitivity reactions. Pause the video and take a moment to familiarize yourself with the common names, causes, signs, and symptoms before moving on. Type 2 hypersensitivity involves IgG or IgM antibodies. Complement activation causes cell lysis or damage by microphage. Antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity, ADCC, with cytotoxic T cells. Antigens can be self-antigens in the form of autoimmune disease or naturally occurring but external antigens, such as blood type antigens. This is an illustration of what may occur in a mismatched blood transfusion. A type 2 hypersensitivity hemolytic transfusion reaction, or HTR, leading to hemolytic anemia 
is seen here. Blood from a type A donor is administered to a patient with type B. The anti-A isohemagglutin IgM antibodies in the recipient bind to the agglutinate the incoming donor type A red blood cells. The bound anti-A antibodies activate the classical complement cascade resulting in the destruction of the donor red blood cells. RH incompatibility. Here we see an illustration of what might occur when a mother and her newborn baby do not share the same RH factor. Fetal erythrocytes are introduced into the mother's circulatory system before or during birth, leading to the production of anti-RH IgG antibodies. These antibodies can remain in the mother, and if she becomes pregnant with a second RH positive baby, they can cross the placenta and attach to the fetal RH positive erythrocytes. The complement mediated hemolysis of fetal erythrocytes will result in a lack of sufficient cells for proper oxygenation of the fetus. Type 3 hypersensitivity. Type 3 hypersensitivity involves IgG antibodies and antigens from complexes that lodge in basement membranes. Complement activation, stimulation of inflammatory response, and recruitment and activation of neutrophils ensues. Type 3 hypersensitivities can lead to damage to blood vessels, heart tissue, joints, skin, and or kidneys. Type 4 hypersensitivity is regulated by T cells and involves effector cells. There are three subcategories illustrated on this slide. Please take a moment to pause the video and familiarize yourself with each subcategory, the antigen, effector mechanism, and examples. This is an illustration of a reaction to poison ivy or poison oak, which falls under the aforementioned categorization. Hypersensitivity pneumonis. This is occupational or environmental disease. It occurs in different allergens in different environments. Dust, mold, bird droppings, endospores, chemicals, and more can all cause this type of hypersensitivity. It can be mediated by type 3 or type 4. Diagnosis of hypersensitivities involves multiple tests measurements of IgE levels, antigen skin tests, intradermal tests are all often utilized in these studies. A positive test will exhibit a wheel and flare or a raised bump. Treatment of hypersensitivity. Treatment of hypersensitivity can involve desensitization, which requires repeated injections of diluted allergens to prevent a reaction. The injection of epinephrine for acute reactions, antihistamines, anti-inflammatory drugs, or simple avoidance of the allergen. This table will provide you with a summary of hypersensitivity types and their mechanisms. Autoimmunity. A healthy immune system protects the body by attacking invading enemies, including pathogens. If the immune system sees the body's own cells as the enemy, tolerance is lost and autoimmune diseases occur. The causes of autoimmune diseases are a combination of the individual's genetic makeup and the effect of environmental influences but much is still unknown. Some autoimmune disease, diseases attack specific organs, whereas others are more systemic. This table provides you with a summary of a few diseases, their cause, and signs and symptoms that fall in this category. Please pause the video momentarily and familiarize yourself with each before moving on. Celiac disease. Celiac disease affects mainly the small intestine and involves a gluten intolerance. 
gluten is a protein in many grains, such as wheat and barley. Most people have a genetic predisposition and unclear environmental influence. Autoantibodies and an inflammatory response ensue upon ingestion of gluten. This results in flattened microvilli, decreased absorption, weight loss, and anemia. Disorders of the thyroid, Graves' disease. Antibodies can target the TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone receptor in the thyroid. This is mostly but not always stimulates production and can lead to goiter. Hashimoto thyroiditis. Lymphotic thyroiditis is caused by helper T helper 1 mediated attack to the thyroid gland. This inhibits thyroid hormone production and can be associated to other autoimmune disorders. Symptoms may include goiter, muscle weakness, depression, and even memory loss. Type 1 diabetes. Often children and young adults exhibit type 1 diabetes. Insulin producing Langerhans cells are destroyed by T helper 1 mediated immune response. Viral infections can modulate the response. In the end, there is no insulin production and the patient will need insulin for the rest of their lives. Addison's disease. Destruction of the adrenal glands, the glands lying above the kidneys and the that produce glucocorticoids, mineral corticoids, and sex steroids is the cause of Addison's disease, also called primary adrenal insufficiency. Today, up to 80% of Addison's disease cases are diagnosed as autoimmune Addison's disease, or ADD. This is caused by an autoimmune response to the adrenal tissue disrupting adrenal function. It can have very serious effects with abnormal levels of glucose and electrolytes, low blood pressure, anemia, low levels of white blood cells, and hyperpigmentation. Systemic autoimmune diseases. Systemic autoimmune diseases can target multiple organs or tissues and include things such as multiple sclerosis and rheumatoid arthritis. MS is an autoimmune central nervous system disease affecting both the brain and spinal cord. Immune cells penetrate the blood-brain barrier and cause inflammation, demyelination, and neuron degeneration. Neuron signaling is subsequently disrupted. Myasthenia graves. This is a disease where antibodies attack the acetylcholine receptor. This disrupts the binding of neurotransmitters to muscle cells, leading to muscle weakness. It can cause death by paralysis of the respiratory muscles. Rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic inflammatory joint condition, a type three hypersensitivity reaction and activation of CD4 T cells. Cytokines, and acute phase proteins, immune complexes, and activation of complement all occur and lead to severe tissue damage. Systemic lupus is a type three hypersensitivity reaction. Antibodies form against the nuclear, against nuclear and cytoplasmic proteins. This leads to nuclear and cell destruction and immune complexes and comes with a wide range of symptoms. Transplants. Let's talk about the challenges of transplantation. A graft is the transplantation of an organ or tissue to a different location. There are different types of grafts depending on the source of new tissue or organ. Tissues that are transplanted from one genetically distinct individual to another within the same species are called allografts. An interesting variant of the allograph is an isograph. 
In this case, tissue from one twin is transplanted to another. If tissues are transplanted from one area on an individual to another area of the same individual, it's known as an autograft. If tissues from an animal are transplanted to, into a human, it's called a xenograft. Transplant rejection. The closer the genetic match between the donor and recipient, the lower the risk of rejection. Rejection occurs when the recipient's immune system recognizes the donor tissue as foreign or non-self, triggering an immune response. The major histocompatibility complex markers, MHC1 and MHC2, more specifically identified as human leukocyte antigens, play a role in transplant rejection. The HLAs expressed in tissue transplanted from a genetically different individual or species may be recognized as non-self molecules by the host's dendritic cells. Graft versus host disease. A form of rejection called graft versus host disease primarily occurs in recipients of bone marrow transplants and peripheral bone stem cells. The GHVD presents a unique situation because the transplanted tissue is capable of producing immune cells. APCs in the donated bone marrow may recognize the host cells as non-self, leading to activation of the donor cytotoxic T cells. Once activated, the donor's T cells attack the recipient cells, causing acute GVHD. To minimize the risk of GVHD, it's critically important to match the HLAs of the host and donor as closely as possible in bone marrow transplants. In addition, the donated bone marrow is processed before grafting to remove as many donor APCs and T cells as possible, leaving mostly hematopoietic stem cells. Immunodeficiencies. Immunodeficiencies come in two forms, primary and secondary. Primary are inherited and found mostly in the developed world. Secondary are acquired and found in the developing world, including things such as malnutrition. This table summarizes examples of primary immunodeficiencies. There are currently more than 250 identified, and they can affect either nonspecific innate or adaptive immune responses. Make sure to pause the video and familiarize yourself with these before moving on. Patients have an increased susceptibility to infection in primary immunodeficiencies. In general, a patient born with primary immunodeficiency commonly has an increased susceptibility to infection. This susceptibility can become apparent shortly after birth or in early childhood for some individuals, whereas other patients develop symptoms later in life. Severe combined immunodeficiency. The most serious case is severe combined immunodeficiency. Patients have B cell and T cell defects that impair T cell dependent antibody responses as well as cell mediated immune responses. Patients with SCID also cannot develop immunological memory, so vaccines provide them no protection and live attenuated vaccines can actually cause the infection they are intended to prevent. The most common forms of X-linked SCID, which accounts for nearly 50% of all cases and occurs primarily in males. Patients with SCID are typically diagnosed within the first few months of life after developing severe, often life-threatening opportunistic infections. Without treatment, babies with SCID usually do not survive infancy. Bone marrow transplants may help, although they come with risks also. Ethemic 
mice or nude mice. This picture shows a special kind of mice used in laboratory research. Nude mice lack a thymus, therefore they do not possess any T cell related immunity and even their antibody response is limited due to the lack of T health. Nude mice need to be kept in germ-free environments. They are extremely useful in research as they do not reject transplants. Primary immunodeficiencies of selected components. Primary immunodeficiencies that affect only certain functions of the immune system are usually susceptible to certain infections, those targeted by the systems affected. For example, in chronic granulatose disease, the phagocytic cells are affected, which can result in chronic inflammation called a granuloma. In selective IgA deficiency, patients can produce IgM and IgG, but not IgA, which is important in secretions. These patients have recurring lung and GI infections. Secondary immunodeficiencies. Secondary immunodeficiencies can be caused by systemic disorders such as diabetes, malnutrition, hepatitis, or HIV. They can lead to opportunistic infections, prolonged critical illness due to infection, surgery, or trauma in the very young, elderly, or hospitalized patients, immunosuppressive treatments such as chemotherapy and bone marrow transplantation or radiation therapy can all contribute to secondary immunodeficiencies. Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome, or AIDS. HIV infects CD4 T cells, or T helper cells. Over time, the CD4 cells number decreases and leads to opportunistic infections. Immune Surveillance. While this is a microbiology class, we want to give a more expansive way of the immune system's role in human health. When we say the immune system recognizes non-self cells, that also includes cancerous cells. While cells can come from the patient's own cells, they are transformed due to genetic changes and therefore may express antigens that normal cells do not making them targets of the immune system. The theory of immune surveillance, which is not universally accepted, proposes that the immune system continuously monitors and destroys transformed cells, which can explain why cancers in general tend to be more common in older people. Cancer immunity. Adaptive and innate immune responses are engaged by tumor antigens, self-molecules only found on abnormal cells. These adaptive responses stimulate T helper cells to activate cytotoxic T cells and NK cells of innate immunity that will seek and destroy cancer cells. See the picture of a squamous cancer cell in white attached to two cytotoxic T lymphocytes. Interestingly, similar to pathogens, cancer cells can also suppress the immune response or become resistant to it. Cancer vaccines. Cancer vaccines can come in two forms, preventative and therapeutic. Preventative cancer vaccines target viral infections associated with cancers while therapeutic vaccines are used to treat cancer and are mostly experimental. And this concludes our coverage of Chapter 19, Diseases of the Immune System.